Hello everyone. I hope you've had a good week. Our lesson today is in, is in Colossians, the first chapter, the, beginning with the 24th verse. And uh, the title of the lesson is The Gospel's Goal. Let's go the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we're just so grateful, Lord, for all the answers prayer, answered prayers that we've seen uh, come our way this week. Lord, we pray and we thank you so much for the improvement that Amy Helton has had. Lord, we continue to lift her up and we pray that you keep your healing hand upon her, but we are grateful, Lord, that you have ministered to her and, and improved her health. Uh, Lord, we're thankful that Gladys got to come home, that Sandra's doing better, and Lord, we just pray that others in our church that are healing and, and have been sick, Lord, that, they, that you'll keep your hand upon them. Lord, I pray especially, Lord, for an uh, extended family member today and uh, pray for Lorraine. She's in very a uh, lot of pain and, and facing surgery in a few days. And Lord, I just pray that you'll put your hand upon Lorraine, that you will heal her according to your will. And Lord, I pray for her comfort and for the comfort of Karen. And uh, Lord, we just pray that you'll be with both of them. And uh, Lord, we love them and we ask a special blessing on each one. Pray for our pastor, pray for the leaders of our church. Lord, we pray for the leaders of our nation. Lord, I ask your forgiveness for we all fail you and I ask your personal forgiveness for where I fail you. And Lord, I just pray that uh, you'll be with us all as we struggle in our Christian lives. Help us not to give up, Lord. Help us to keep on keeping on. And, and when things come our way that discourage us, help us to look to you and focus on you and not on the problems that come our way. And we know, Lord, that you are in the midst of things and you can correct things and you can change things. And Lord, we're, we're praying for that. And uh, Lord, I just thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your love and ask that you be with us in life. Guide us through this lesson and uh, help me to teach it, Lord, in a way that's easily understood. For I ask it in Jesus' name and we thank you most of all for Jesus. Amen. Um, in Colossians, let's just begin by reading those first few verses in Colossians, the 24th through the 27th uh, verses. Who now rejoice in my suffering for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for the, his body's sake, which is the church. Wherefore, I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you, to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Paul knew about suffering. Uh, he had suffered for his faith. And in these opening verses, he mentions suffering for you like he's suffering for the church. And the Colossian church uh, was not a church that uh, Paul had begun, but it had been uh, started by believers. And of course, Paul had a, a, a true connection to those believers. And he uh, obviously uh, had uh, concern for this church and uh, prayed for this church and reached out to this church. And it might seem here that Paul is comparing his suffering or um, saying that his suffering's got something to do with anything, but that's not what he means. Uh, he, he's not comparing himself to Christ and Christ's suffering here. Uh, Paul um, meant, I think, the commentators uh, uh, kind of said in our lesson that uh, Paul felt like he had a great debt that he owed uh, Christ. Uh, Paul spent his adult life as Saul of Tarsus, and he was a persecutor of Christians. And uh, I'm sure, you know, that that, that humbled him and uh, made him uh, want so much more to do more for, for the Lord because of his past. And uh, so he felt like he had a great debt uh, that he, uh, uh, because of, of his background, because of persecution of Christians. And he rejoiced in any opportunity that he had to do something for Christ. And uh, Paul was determined uh, that his faith in Christ Jesus, uh, when it brought suffering his way, that um, if it harmed himself personally, 
then he was willing to endure it. And uh, he didn't enjoy it, but he endured it. And uh, he was willing, you know, to accept punishment for his faith uh, and uh, try to bear whatever came his way because of his faith in Christ. Uh, you know, God had to see something in Saul of Tarsus. Uh, he saw something extraordinary uh, in him, or I don't believe he would have chosen him. Uh, the normal person wouldn't have chosen him uh, uh, because of his reputation and because of the things that he did. But God saw something more in Paul, and uh, that's obvious. Uh, the Lord sent uh, Ananias, uh, who was afraid to go at first, to talk to Paul. And, of course, blind, uh, by this time, Paul is blind. And uh, But God said to Ananias, For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And that's in Acts 9, 16. He said, I, I will show him what great things he has to suffer for me. And uh, so Paul called himself a minister. And uh, he was very true in calling himself that because a minister uh, performs religious ceremonies, and he did that. He, uh, he held church services or gatherings. Uh, he educate, uh, a minister educates. And, of course, he did that also. He uh, uh, tried to educate the people to the true gospel of Christ. Uh, and he represented, uh, a minister represents his or her government and uh, in a foreign country. And, of course, you know, he represented the kingdom of Christ. And uh, so he was all of those things. Uh, all qualities Paul um, possessed, you know, he was a preacher of the gospel uh, and doing all those things. And he was very, very uh, much able to call himself a minister uh, in uh, because of the thing, the life that he lived. Uh, Paul knew his calling and he followed it. He was focused on it and uh, he followed the calling. And of course, his calling was to spread the gospel as far and as wide as he could. Um, and to see souls uh, saved, see, see people trust in Jesus Christ. Uh, God used Paul as a human channel through whom he could reach other people. He used Paul so greatly that there are 13 books of the New Testament that uh, begin, you know, with him, uh, with his name. And uh, so that is, uh, that is a great thing to know that 13 chapters or 13 books in the New Testament are credited to, to him and his documentation. Uh, we know that he, um, we know that to become a Christian, that we have to know who Jesus is and uh, what he has done for us. Uh, we have to accept that. The great mystery of God, I believe, one of the great mysteries of God is that here in these verses, in verse 27, I, I think it, it is that a holy, righteous God would love us enough to send his only begotten son to the cross to die for us sinners. And uh, that's something that's hard for us in our minds to even comprehend. You know, you might sacrifice yourself for someone you loved. Uh, you might, you know, sacrifice something you owned. But to sacrifice your own child or your own grandchild or your husband or your wife, we, we can't imagine that. We can't imagine putting someone we love that much on a cross for someone who hates us, who is a sinner, you know. And that's how God sees us. You know, we were sinners. And, and he did that for us in spite of our wickedness, in spite of our sin. He did that for us. And uh, that's very humbling. As people, we have a hard time understanding that, you know, uh, what he did for us. He did for us what we cannot do and we could not do. And uh, he did it for us. And, uh, you know, I, we just can't understand it. And so that it is a mystery of God. We might, like I said, we might love someone enough to give our lives for, for them. But to give our life for someone who hates us, who is an enemy to us, uh, that's really hard for us to comprehend. Um, it truly is a mystery 
but we're very grateful for it. Let's look on at verses 28 and 29. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Paul warned and he taught anyone who would listen uh, and was receptive to the message of Christ. Some preaching, uh, you know, I, I've sat under preachers, and I'm sure you have too, uh, who, uh, for, let, for lack of a better word, focus on all the negative. You know, they'll, um, they'll preach really hard about all the sins of the people and all the things that we, that we might do wrong. And, and, uh, and we get, you know, we get that and we get the reason for that as far as we are sinners and we need to recognize sin. But um, sometimes beating people over the head um, with uh, their sins or the things that they're not doing or the things that they should be doing or um, sometimes it, it, it doesn't go the way that I, I'm sure the, the preacher might want it to go because we all begin to see the negative side. You know, God, we're not lovable. We're not um, uh, worthy. We're, we're horrible sinners and we can never make it. We can never, you know, and, and that all would be true except for the fact that we, do, we rely on Jesus Christ to save us, not ourselves. And, uh, and I don't want to sound like I'm uh, browbeating hard preaching preachers. You know, there's nothing wrong with a hard preaching preacher. Uh, but sometimes berating people or being negative to people, it does not reach people the way that I think a pastor would like for them to. And I think we have to see sin for what it is. But we also have to realize that we are all sinners saved by grace. Uh, he also wanted his preaching uh, Paul to reach every man and make every man realize we're all in the same playing field. Uh, we're all sinners. We're all uh, in that hole, and we all need to Jesus to to pull us out. And uh, I think that's what some pastors are trying to sit, trying to get across. And uh, but we also have to realize that all of us need a Savior. All you know, and He is loving and giving and kind. And yes, He wants us to recognize sin, and yes, He wants us to call sin what it is. But he wants us to recognize in the midst of all that, that he is a loving and righteous and kind God who extends his salvation to all and to everyone. No matter how black uh, a sinner you are, you know, we're all in the same boat. You know, uh, sin is sin and uh, God sees sin all the same. It doesn't matter. And that's hard for us to imagine sometimes that a little sin that we do and a big sin that we might think somebody else does is the same, but sin is sin, and uh, the Bible teaches that. And you know, Paul had the men mentality that uh, to God be the glory, great things he had to, he has done, and uh, he knew who deserved the credit for all the good things that come our way, and all the the gift of salvation, and and uh, all the blessings that he gives us. So he recognized that the good and the bad. I hope what I've said's come out uh, all right. <laughs> I'm not trying to down a preacher for preaching hard. I understand that. Okay, let's look at chapter 2 of Colossians and verse 1 through 3. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Lacedonia. And for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are all are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I think that's Laodicea, and I pronounced it incorrectly. Um, we see Paul's constant referral to three scriptures 
you know, of him, uh, or, or through the scriptures, of him praying for fellow believers. And uh, praying uh, is important. He knew that prayer was important. Uh, it's an important part of our spiritual life. Uh, it helps us fight spiritual battles. It is definitely a weapon of war, and uh, we need to use it. And uh, we see uh, others in the Bible who thought prayer was very important and used prayer uh, to intercede for others as well as themselves. Uh, in Exodus 32, 32, we see Moses um, crying out to the Lord, praying uh, for forgiveness for the Israelites because of their uh, sin. And uh, when they had sinned against God, he was asking God to forgive them, uh, the people, and to blot his own name out of the book. He said, you know, please forgive them. And uh, in Luke twenty-two forty-four, 44, we see Jesus agonizing in prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, praying so hard that uh, he... Uh, that his sweat became like great drops of blood. And uh, so prayer is important. If Jesus did it, it's gotta be important. Paul sincerely prayed for uh, others. He prayed for these churches. Uh, he said, uh, what great conflict I have for you. What great concern I have for you. Um, how much do we personally use the power of prayer uh, as a weapon? And I truly, I've seen power work, prayer work, I'm telling you. And uh, I know that God is the only one who can answer prayer. And I have seen it work. And I have seen it, a response, you know, just almost immediately. From uh, And I believe when people come together and pray that, that you know, but you got to re remember that God's will has got to be in it. But still, I see things happen. And it's the power of prayer. I believe in it. Uh, prayer is important in our daily lives, both for ourselves and for other people. Prayer can comfort us. Uh, prayer can bring us closer to each other uh, and to the Lord. Prayer brings churches together and allows uh, love to grow through the uh, work of the Holy Spirit. Genuine love, you know, is the glue that holds things together, holds marriages together, holds families together, uh, holds churches together. Uh, and holds us together as Christians. God's love for us is what glues us together as Christians and our love for him and for what he's done for us. Paul prayed that believers would possess the riches of understanding and acknowledgement that we are in Christ through our faith, that we are, we are members of the family of God. Believers who come together with a common faith, a common love, and a common goal, you know, and that's sharing about Jesus. And uh, that is the goal of our church, is to share Jesus and to uh, tell others about him so that they can come to a saving knowledge of him. Christians do not have to know everything uh, in order to uh, li live and minister and love other people with confidence. Um, we just need to know Christ. Um, in Christ lies all the mysteries of life, of our faith, the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Jesus Christ is available to all of us, sinners and believers. He is available. Um, for the lost, he offers salvation. For the believer, he offers the gift of eternal life. We acknowledge that our God holds the key to all mysteries of life. And uh, some things we'll never understand until we get to heaven. And uh, we'll never know uh, certain mysteries, I believe, and uh, until we get there and we, we see things like he does. The Holy Spirit reveals, you know, uh, many things to us, I believe, as we grow in our Christian life. But we will also, we're also equipped, like I said, with a very powerful weapon. And that powerful weapon is prayer. And uh, so let us use that weapon of prayer. Let us put it to good use, you know, against the devil and against the things of this world. And uh, this week, pray for each other. Uh, if if you don't, ha if you have a moment and you don't have anybody to pray for, pray for me. I would I would truly appreciate it. Uh, but we need to pray for others and pray for ourselves. Uh, there is power in prayer. So let us let us grab that power and use it. 
as Christians and as uh, followers of Christ. Hope you've enjoyed the lesson. Until next time, much love.